All right, today in the garage, we're going to do a tool review. Uh, we're going to do a review of the new Milwaukee M18 fuel cordless grinder. All right, so today I thought uh, I'd run through a review of a uh, new tool I got in the shop. I uh, picked this up a couple weeks ago. I haven't had a chance to use it a whole lot, um, but I, mostly I wanted to do uh, some real, uh, real tests on it to see how well it really worked. Uh, this is the M18 uh, Fuel cordless grinder from Milwaukee. Um, now, the, the fuel line of their tools is uh, their new uh, brushless motor uh, design. Um, they had an M18 cordless grinder before this that uh, didn't have fuel in the name. That Supposedly, these have significantly better power, and I believe uh, they're supposed to be more efficient with the battery usage. Um, so uh, the question I had on this was, yes, yeah, it, it certainly has the convenience of being cordless, which is uh, the biggest reason I bought is occasionally I want to use something when uh, I don't have easy access to a, an outlet and can't reach it with an extension cord. Um, but I was wondering, how does it compare to a normal corded grinder? Uh, could you use this as your normal day-to-day -day grinder uh, in place of a, uh, you know, just even a normal cheap uh, regular 110 volt uh, corded grinder? So what I'm going to do today is uh, I'm going to try to answer that question by doing some tests between this and just a uh, actually a cheap Harbor Freight corded grinder to see, you know, considering that that's kind of the benchmark for uh, something, you know, it's not the greatest cordless, corded grinder, that the Harbor Freight that is, but it's, it's certainly usable and it'll do pretty much everything you need to do. So how does this really compare? Uh, first of all, let's uh, take a closer look at this. Um, you know, first of all, I, you know, I paid full price for this. I, uh, um, unfortunately, Milwaukee doesn't send me tools to, to review for free. Uh, so uh, this is, you know, completely unbiased, uh, not in, imp impacted by uh, them at all. Uh, but I'm kind of a fan of Milwaukee tools. I've got some cordless drills that I've been quite happy with. Uh, build quality seems really good. Um, it's got some nice features. Like you can see, the, uh, there's a little bit of flex to the side handle to reduce some vibration. Um, it's, you know, the shape of the handle is pretty easy to, to grab onto. So I think it's... Uh, you know, pretty easy to use for several hours without uh, getting tired. It has a nice uh, toolless design for the uh, moving the the guard. Simply a uh, little lever you pull back, and actually you can. Uh, I'd have to pull the the grinding disc off, but if you turn that, loosen the lever and turn it all the way, that can come off if you want to run it without the uh, without the guard. Um, so uh, price of this tool, uh, list price, I believe, is $169, which is fairly pricey. Um, however, you can get it uh, significantly cheaper at, another, at some places. Um, I bought this through, uh, through a vendor on eBay. I believe I paid about $135 for that. Um, one thing to watch out for, of course, you know, as always with eBay, make sure you're buying from a reputable seller. And also... One of the things with Milwaukee is they uh, do have fairly similar names with different tools. For example, I mentioned there was an older version of this. There was the M18 cordless grinder, and this is the M18 fuel cordless grinder. Uh, what I've found is uh, to make sure you're really getting what you expect is to actually look at the uh, Milwaukee part number on it. And I don't have that memorized, but I'll put it somewhere here on the screen uh, so you can... Uh, see the part number of exactly what this is, so there's uh, no confusion between different tools. Um, now, that $169, that does not come with the battery. That is the bare tool only, uh, no battery, no charger. Uh, the intention is most people who are going to buy something like this probably already have um, some Milwaukee tools. I have a, uh, a couple different Milwaukee tools. I have a, a drill and a small impact driver. So I've got, um, I think I've got actually three batteries and a charger. So that wasn't an issue for me. So something to keep in mind if you don't already have some Milwaukee tools, that's some extra expense. I believe they do sell a kit with, the, with this grinder, with the charger and battery. I, I do not recall the price on that. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's run this through some paces and see how it compares. So the tool I'm comparing the Milwaukee to is just a uh, cheap Harbor Freight corded grinder. Now, I, I know you're saying that's not a fair comparison, but my thought is this is 
As far as corded grinders go, this is just a reasonable one. It's certainly not top of the line, it's functional. So my thought was in order to be able to say, you know, the Milwaukee cordless is, you know, usable as an everyday grinder that you would use for everything, it's gotta be pretty much, you know, comparable to at least this as a corded grinder. So I thought this would be a, a, a good benchmark. Uh, for the first test, I thought I'd do a simple RPM test. So this is just uh, completely no load. Um, you can see I've uh, painted a white stripe onto a cutting desk and I've got a uh, optical tachometer. So let's, uh, let's see how fast they spin just with no load. So first of all, let's start out with the Harbor Freight. So that spins about 9,500 uh, RPM uh, with no load. So now I just need to swap the, that disc over to my Milwaukee and let's see what it'll do. All right, so let's see how the Milwaukee does. So on pure RPM, obviously the Milwaukee is significantly slower. Uh, it runs about 6,200 RPM versus the 9,500 RPM. Um, but let's do another test. Let's see how they actually do with a little bit of load on them. So I'm going to try to get scientific about this and uh, try to make it as, you know, even a comparison between the two as possible. So I've uh, rigged up something here to uh, try to test the grinder under some load. So I've got the grinder held up by some, uh, some stands just using the bolts uh, where the, the handle can uh, bolt into. Um, and on here I've got an arm that's uh, got some weights on it that I can use to uh, press onto the uh, onto the uh, flap disc. I'm using a, just a you know sanding flap disc for this test. Uh, so I should be able to get a very consistent amount of load uh, between both grinders. So this is simulating you know if you were actually using it and putting a little bit of pressure onto it. Um, so right now I've got seven and a half pounds on there. We'll uh, I, I've got another two and a half pound weight. We can you know, go up to 10 pounds if we need to. But uh, similar to what I did before on this flap disc, I have some white paint on the uh, back side, and I can use my uh, tachometer there to see what the load is. And so we can see uh, how does the, uh, you know, the, free, the no load RPM compare to uh, when it's actually uh, doing something. So let's give this a try. All right, so the Harbor Freight corded grinder uh, under this uh, this particular load went down to around 6,000 RPM. So that's down from the uh, 9,000 or so that it started out with down to 6,000. So, you know, significant difference. Uh, so now let's see under this same exact amount of load, how does the uh, Milwaukee cordless grinder do? Knowing thing about these things is every single grinder takes a different wrench. They're the same style but the width is different. So I keep misplacing one wrench or the other. I should probably uh, find a way to attach them to the cord. Of course, on the Milwaukee, there's no cord. So I don't know where I'll attach it. So I've got the Milwaukee cordless grinder in the same rig now, same amount of weight. Uh, so I remember, I believe this was 6,200 RPM with no load. Uh, let's see how much that drops off with some load on it. Okay, there, there's a interesting uh, result there. Uh, so it was running around 3,200 RPM, so a significant drop. And uh, I didn't let off the switch. It actually did uh, shut itself off. Um, 
you know, for uh, one of the things I want to use this for is for uh, going out to salvage yards and, uh, you know, getting parts off of old cars. Occasionally things are rusty and you need to cut off wheels. So, um, you know, let's see, uh, how well does this work with the cutoff wheel just, uh, you know, cutting through a piece of metal? Let's, uh, let's give that a try. Let's try a uh, real world test. Uh, what I'm going to do is I've got a just a normal cutoff wheel mounted in here right now in the uh, Harbor Freight corded grinder. And I'm going to cut through a piece of uh, it's one inch by uh, like eight, eighth inch thick uh, angle iron. Um, you know, bit of a real world test. Let's see how this works. Um, now, one thing. <laughs> And this is, this is one place where the Milwaukee is much, much better. Um, I wanted to change the angle of the guard here uh, to make it a little easier to cut, which means loosening this screw and the screw stripped on me. Um, so I, don't, I think I had over tightened it before, but uh, you know, cheap, uh, that Harbor Freight tools are cheaper for a reason. Um, and this, this is even cheap on Harbor Freight uh, standards. This is one of their cheaper grinders. Uh, the Milwaukee, of course, has a completely toolless uh, design for uh, moving that guard. So it'll be a little awkward uh, to get it in the right angle, but I think I can still manage to cut through here. So of course, uh, you know, as expected, that makes pretty short work out of it and uh, makes a good cut. Let's see, uh, see how it works with the uh, Milwaukee cordless grinder. Okay, let's do the same test with the Milwaukee. All right, we still get. Uh, get the motor cutting out, which is a little disappointing. Well, here it is uh, several hours later. I was actually in the process of editing this video and I had a thought um, after, you know, with the grinder cutting off on me under load, and I came to the realization uh, that, that I screwed up. And as I've said, I will admit when I screw up. Um, well, I didn't necessarily screw up. It, it's actually a useful test. I was using the original batteries that came with my drill, which are a few years old. They, they seem to work fine for the drill, but um, they are a smaller battery. And more importantly, the new uh, batteries are the M18 XC uh, batteries. Uh, which, uh, you know, not, it's not just longer run time. I, I actually bought this uh, 5 amp hour battery just for longer run, uh, run times with my drill, but it turns out they actually put out more amperage, not just for a longer time, but they'll put out more power. And it turns out that the grinder actually works considerably better with this. So uh, something worth knowing if you are going to buy one of these and you've got um, you know, just a, you know, an older drill with, with these batteries, uh, you know, it's going to not necessarily work quite as well. So uh, what I'm going to do, well, first of all, I did, uh, before I started filming here, I did a quick check with no load and it's about 6,700 uh, RPM. So we got about 500 RPM more with no load. Um, I haven't set up my whole uh, rig with the uh with the weights and everything but i thought i'd jump straight to uh, uh to cutting of the uh the bar so let's see uh let's see how that works i'm gonna put my uh cut off wheel on and let's see how it cuts through That is night and day difference. Okay, so hopefully, uh, hopefully people didn't tune out of this video part way through and said, "Well, okay, it looks like that's not uh, 
that tool doesn't work very well. That, that is significantly better with the, uh, the five amp hour battery. And um, I don't think it cut through quite as quickly as the, as the corded grinder, but it certainly did it without uh, cutting out. So, uh, you know, originally I was a little bit disappointed, but now uh, I think this thing works pretty well. In fact, I only have one of the five amp hour batteries. I may actually have to get another one if I'm gonna use this uh, seriously. But, uh, you know, I'm sure with that little bit, yeah, it still shows full charge. Even with the smaller battery that I was using earlier, um, it still has three out of four bars. Um, and that's after, you know, pulling, you know, as much as I could out of it, you know, enough, enough that it shut the tool off. Um, so I think the five amp hour battery, you're going to get a significant amount of runtime. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, in retrospect, after I retest this with a new battery, I think this is, uh, you actually could use this in place of, uh, of a normal, uh, normal grinder. Uh, you know, certainly you're going to, uh, have to charge it if you're going to use it a lot, but uh, I think it'd work out pretty well. Um, so anyway, I think that one uh, wraps up this video. Again, I thought I'd wrap this up a few hours ago. I'm glad I came up with that, uh, realized that thought while I was uh, editing the video. Um, so uh, anyway, if you found this useful, definitely uh, appreciate you subscribing to the channel and uh, you can check out some of my other projects. Uh, I'll still be doing some work on the the Datsun, uh, the Datsun 510 racer project on my old international pickup and, uh, you know, maybe get some more work done on my Sprinter van, who knows what else. Um, so, you know, tune in again and check out my projects. In the meantime, get out in your garage, do something interesting.